Now, but first, is the pension rise promise right or wrong? Now, this affects me. I'm a slightly older woman. Uh, give us a call on 0207 862 22 Chancellor Jeremy Hunt has said the Conservatives will keep the triple lock pledge for pensions. It basically means that pension rise is in line with average earnings growth, inflation or 2.5%, whichever is the highest. It's due to rise by 8.5% next month in line with earnings. Labour insiders have said that Sir Keir Starmer will match the commitment in a bid for the grey vote, but it's all a bit vague at the moment. Uh, but however, critics say that the triple lock is just not financially sustainable for any party. It's a drain on the taxpayer and far too generous. So we're asking, is it wrong? to keep it? Or is it only fair to uphold the triple lot for pensioners who have worked and paid taxes for many years? Um, right, I'm going to come to the younger, I don't think Jenny will mind me saying this, <laughs> the youngest <laughs> member of the panel, but it's not that young to be honest with you. Um, Bobby, what do you make of this? I mean, the triple lock, I mean, the Tories are now making it a manifesto mm. pledge. They are locked in to keeping it, no pun intended there. <laughs> is, is this fair? So the way I see it, it's almost like a balance between the maths and economics of it and a sense of fairness. So when we look at the uh, triple lock, it was first set up in 2010 by the coalition yes, government. Yes. And the aim was, they said, the state pension shouldn't be overtaken by the cost of living or the working population's wage increase. And that's why it was set up. You know, we've got these three, the three locks, either inflation, average rise in wages or the 2.5%. But the way I see the risk, again, in economics, there's always like a positive because you're trying to be fair to people that have earned the income um, and are in retirement. But the risk is that if this triple lock goes goes on for so long that the state pension spending increases so significantly, this puts an insurmountable pressure for much higher state pension ages. So what we're doing is we're essentially creating a, a demographic time bomb where people at my age or younger, by the time they get to retirement in 10, 15, 20 years, the retirement age will be 68, 70, 71. So almost like shifting the burden on from now to the future. So it's a trade-off we've got to find here. I mean, Jenny, surely pensioners, you know, the, the group of and pensioners... And the pensioners are a lot closer for me than it is for you, by <laughs> yeah, the way, Yeah, Bobby. hello, welcome hello. to my house. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, surely pensioners have paid in all their lives for this. Absolutely. I mean, National Insurance, you've been paying it all your life. And um, also, we're living longer. Yes. Um, and, you Although know, Bobby's that's... pushing his luck this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and in a way, for me, I just think that we should, you know, we should keep up with um, the cost of living um, and those earnings, the current earnings that people are getting at the moment because in a way you know we need money to spend and we will have disposable income mm -hmm. at that retirement age and um, which obviously will go back into the economy um you know if we're talking about crunching mm -hmm. figures uh, and also there's you know I, I always feel like there's a certain generation now we're kind of like, like the forgotten generation but we're the ones that work so very hard for mm -hmm. so very long mm -hmm. and I know there's a pot and it's all got to be shared out in the right way like you say mm -hmm. and it's you know there's a lot of a number crunching to do but um, maybe it's because it's very close for me I don't yeah. know but you know I, I think it's I think there should be a parity with with everything else including you know with the cost of living that's going on oh, sure. obviously in an ideal world we would help youngsters out with the housing problems they have getting on the yeah. property ladder is the yeah, one we've thing got, really we've got more responsibilities yeah. when we're older when we're retired you know you've got child care you might be helping out with that and stuff so I think you know we have got we, we are sort of feeding things back into the community at that stage in our lives right, okay let's see what some of that is. Lots of calls coming in on this already. I'm just wondering how many of you are going to be on Team Bobby and how many <laughs> on Team Jenny. Uh, let's go to Alexander first. Uh, good afternoon, Alexander. You're calling from Tyne and Weir. What would you like to say? Good afternoon. Um, well, I'm a state pensioner. I'm 73. I know that, that it's, uh, people are saying, like, oh, the state pension is £224 a week. It isn't. That's totally wrong. My state pension has gone up from 165 289. So I don't know where you get this £220 from. That's totally wrong. You've got the, the figures totally wrong. That's my state pension from the April is £189 a week. And I've worked for 50 years. Obviously, I've got a, a small works pension on top of that. But that's my, that's my state pension, £189 a week. So I don't know where you get this £220 from. Yeah, I, th I think, Alexander, it depends on when you actually retired. I think the 2016 right. yeah, right. yeah. was that's the break, totally and there is a correct. difference yeah, in, in how much you're getting. But it, totally all, you know, yes. it, it's not a lot of money, is it? No, it's not. I mean, see, the thing is, percentage rise, it's all okay if it's money on £1,000 a week or something, but on £160-odd a week, I mean, it's, see, the smallest 
when you've got you get a 10 percent riser so 10 percent on 165 pound is 16 pound a week yeah. with 10 percent of a thousand pound is like 100 pound a week obviously yeah. and do, that's do, the difference do you have a private pension as well alexander i've got a, i've got a private pension on top of that yeah right okay that's, I, that's about 40 pound a week or something See, that's not a lot either. Yeah. Now, I mean, 28% of over 55s rely on state pension only. They don't have private pensions. So yeah, Bobby that's what worries mm. me. There are a lot of people that don't have private pensions or a top up from work, yeah. you know, their, their other work that they used to do. So, yeah. you know, that, that's concerning because the majority of people are in that situation. Yeah. So, Bobby, surely it is fair that we keep this triple lot because, you know, th there is this myth that pensions are all very rich, mm -hmm. they're all millionaires, which is, is not true, by the way. You know, they're all off playing golf and not right about the money but in many cases it's because the houses are worth money mm. but they can't afford to sell those houses at the moment because the housing market as we know isn't great so what would you say to people like that i mean they are relying on this they're relying on their yeah. state pensions I, again i definitely acknowledge the fact that i got my, my, some of my friends are in retirement my parents friends um but it's almost like trying to work out how can we best have a system that is generationally fair. Because for younger people in their 20s, 30s and 40s there, you know, I think nowadays people are getting their first property between the age of 34 to 37. Whereas a generation before my parents' generation, yes. people in their 20s. So there's something broken there. Um, and I think, again, if you just look at the pure economics of it, I think the government spends half their government benefits towards the pension. And of course, I'm not saying people who are on the breadline, they obviously need to be looked after, but we're looking at there are people who've got private pension on the top. Do they need the state pension? So maybe the state pension should be given to those most vulnerable, not everyone as a blanket. Ah, everyone takes a state pension. Ooh. That's almost my suggestion. Are we going down the means <laughs> testing road? Let's go to Margaret in Cornwall. Uh, good afternoon, Margaret. What would you like to say? Oh, good. Oh, I was just I'd like to say what happens to those people that have never worked and never paid into the pension scheme. So I don't think they should get it. And in my lifetime, I've known a few of them. As when it came to that I got my pension, I was two years short that I couldn't get a full pension. Right. And I just think, well, what about these, these people? And there seems to be more and more of them these days unemployed, not working. Okay, but Margaret, so, I mean, if you haven't paid in, you don't get the full state pension, but you're not seriously suggesting that we don't, you know, that, that they get absolutely nothing if they haven't contributed. Well, and I think there should be something because I think I know a lot of people who have worked, worked a lot of hours and worked hard, and they... And, you know, and to me, they should get more. The ones that have been on low wages and always worked maybe should get a higher pension. And those that have got good wages maybe a lower pension. I just think the system isn't quite fair. That's interesting, Margaret, because you're kind of agreeing with Bobby about this means testing thing. Jenny, mm -hmm. what do you make of this? I mean, should, should pensions well, be it, means tested? It, it sounds fair, doesn't it? Um, and I suppose, you know, you have got people who can afford to invest in, in their own private pensions. And so maybe they have a reduced amount. For instance, from is Mick Jagger and... claiming a, a, a state pension? He's, enti he's entitled to. I mean, he's, he's entitled, entitled to. His accountants probably make sure he does claim uh, it. You know, maybe <laughs> a lot of people's discretion and, and those people who are fortunate enough, they don't claim their state pension. I presume that does happen as well. So, um, but yeah, the means testing, it's possibly a route to go down. It definitely needs a shake up, let's face it, in one way or another, doesn't yes. it? Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, and, and, and also it's difficult with saying, unfortunately, Margaret, you know, people who haven't, you know, managed to have a employment for as long as maybe they should have and, and contributed to it nationally. So it depends what the circumstances are, why they didn't get employment, you know. And you know and what, it's, Jenny? It's tricky it, that, it's really It is, and you one. know, it's interesting that it was a lady caller that mentioned that, Margaret, and also, you know, yeah. a lot of women, women. did yeah. Work. It's women that are affected now, and I think you, you probably know the stats better than I, Bobby, that women are still not earning as much as men, so they don't get as much pension as men. Mm. So there is that, that divide still there. Uh, right, thanks for your call, Margaret. Interesting thoughts there. Uh, let's get some of your social media messages. Uh, George on Twitter says, the triple lock is just a bribe to the biggest audience who vote in elections. Well, wow. <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, Michael on Facebook says, I doubt it's affordable, but a counter argument is that we provide one of the lowest pensions in Europe. Actually, that's a really good point. We, we do, we're way at the bottom of the pension, you know, provided in this country in Europe and you know the, the other thing here is that you know the government can find money when they need it mm. is it just that pensions 
aren't particularly that sexy. Well, that's it. I'm saying there's a certain demographic of people, you know, a certain generation of people that, you know, aren't that sexy, let's yeah. face and it. And we don't complain as much. No, well, we don't. Older, we get on, we grin and bear it, yeah. don't we? Well, older we generations do. tend to vote, so which is why it's like seen as a vote winner, because yeah. my generation, sadly, we're probably on our phones, like, getting annoyed <laughs> on social media, like, oh, government, but they well, don't you go you certainly and... are on your phone. Yeah, I know, yeah. but we don't go out and vote, whereas older people, my parents' generation, they do. Yeah. So the government's being smart by saying, actually, by, by retaining the triple lock. And there we have it. There's an issue. Well, I do want to go down right. the cynical political route, but, I mean, <laughs> it is older voters that are going to be inclined to vote Conservative. The youngsters are probably already lost. Uh, let's take another call, shall we? Uh, Jane in Staffordshire. What would you like to say, Jane? Hi. Just to comment, uh, I started work when I was 15, mm -hmm. we all did. And I didn't get my retirement till I was 67. Uh, we didn't have a long time if we have our for children. We only had a few months off at a time. Yeah. And, and at the moment, I am now taking care of my grandchildren whose parents are supposed to go out to full-time work. Mm -hmm. That's exactly uh, so, yeah, I do. And I... I don't get this two hundred and odd pounds. I get one hundred and eighty nine pounds. Uh, and if it, we don't get the triple lock, I think with me it would be a matter of heating or feeding uh, yeah. because I do have to pay pay my bills just the same as everybody else who uh, is working. It's things so, like when you're running your grandchildren around, it's the cost of the yeah. petrol you're yeah. paying, Jay, maybe. It's exactly. so many other things. Yeah. 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 You've, exactly. you've, got, you've got financial responsibilities that maybe, you know, other, other generations of, of grandparents, should we say, or retirees didn't have, mm. you know. And yeah. those financial yeah. responsibilities are, like, huge now because of the cost of living. And that's what I'm getting at because you're actually, you, you're going on to another job now, which is a financial burden for you. Yeah, but like I say, when they come about, we stayed in. Uh, yeah, but we started work when we were 15. Yeah. Most of the yeah. people that start work now are nearly 20 by the time they finish college or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we, pay, we were then working a good five or work, yeah. more times. Yeah. And most of my job was care work. Uh, and so, and the problems I've got now health-wise through what we had to do then, the health and safety weren't what well do now, yeah. is it's another issue that we can't carry on doing things we used to do, even if we wanted yeah, to do. Yeah. Very fair point. Um, Jane, thank you so much for your call. I appreciate that. Very interesting points there. And thank you for all your calls on this. Uh, later, is it wrong for protests to be held outside of schools? But after the break, we're going to tell you why you should...